when we were doing The Sound of Music, uh, all of us connected with it were crazy about working with Julie and respected her talent so tremendously and, and her personality and all. We decided we never want to stop working with her in life. And I knew that when they signed uh, Julie for The Sound of Music, they had gotten a commitment for another picture at 20th Century Fox. And so uh, we started thinking about it towards the end of shooting on Sound of Music. It's, let's see if we can come up with some story idea, some character, something she could do so we could grab that other commitment that Fox has with her before somebody else gets it. Max Lamb, who was a story editor of mine at the time, came in one day and said, hey, about that Julie Andrews situation and that commitment, wouldn't she make a great Gertrude Lawrence? This lady has crossed my path many, many times, and, and uh, I had been asked to consider doing something similar a, a couple of times before, but never had it been uh, sounded so appealing or never had it sounded so good as, as when uh, Bob and Saul Chaplin spoke to me about it. One of the selling points with Julie was the fact that we saw this as something uh, uh, as not the great beginning to end definitive biography, a documentary biography of Gertrude Lawrence, but the story of her life, particularly from uh, about World War I, which she started, until the beginning of World War II. And uh, we wanted to make it a very, a very uh, uh, a realistic approach to the theater and putting the theater and the backstage theater and theater personalities on the screen instead of just a, an out-and-out out sort of glamour piece that would, uh, would show only the glamour side of Gertrude Lawrence's life. Just their enthusiasm and the, the things that they described to me uh, got me interested. And uh, I said, yes, I think it would be a wonderful thing to do. I'd like to do it. I was a little intimidated because I knew that uh, Gertie Lawrence was a huge star in her own right. I wasn't sure that I could do her justice. But I felt confident that she could do it, and do it wonderfully well from my experience of working with her on The Sound of Music and realizing from working with her on that picture what a great, greater range she had than had been called all on for any film uh, so far. I actually enjoyed the challenge of playing something a little bit more um, heavy, a little bit more real, some, a character that actually had some reality rather than just being one-dimensional. This lady certainly had an awful lot of dimensions to her. That's one of the things she liked about the project, too. It was a challenge for her, that, uh, and she worked so terribly hard at how she worked with Mike Kidd and, uh, on, the, on, the, on the numbers. Julie's disciplined. She's serious. She works hard. She takes correction. She takes suggestion. She's eager to do her best. She's a perfectionist. She's not particularly attached to the image of the proper Mary Poppins image, for example, because she has much more to offer as a person than that wonderful sense of propriety, which I, I am not denigrating, denigrating in any way, but she has great fun about her. The thing that's unfortunate about Julie's persona, as far as the public is concerned, is they think she's this proper English girl. I guess that the accent does that. She's not that way at all. She is so funny, and she is such fun, that we used to have a ball. I remember lots of times at rehearsal, we said, listen, we better get back to what we're doing. We worked long hours sometimes, but nobody ever really showed it. Uh, I think. Uh, I always like a, a, a kind of upbeat, happy, working atmosphere on a set. There's such a quality, uh, an atmosphere on the set when you're, when you're in a musical. The, uh, the fact of having music around somehow makes the whole place that much more joyous. What fun we had! When we got onto the set, onto the theater set where we did these crazy numbers, I mean, the crew were in hysterics. It was so hysterical that when Bob said, cut, the, the whole crew just broke up. It took a long time to settle them down again. Julie used to come to rehearsal, and she was just one of us. She's one of the girls. She was wonderful to work with. She's so professional and warm, down to earth. Mr. Wise said to Julie at one point, now I'd like you to cross camera. And Julie said, no. And he was a bit startled, and he said, what? And she said, I'm not crossing the camera and upstaging Bernie while he's doing that. And of course, I've, I've loved her dearly ever since. I remember we were doing a scene. Um, I was not on camera. The camera was on her, and she was singing the song. And I responded as my character would. And it was very easy, because I was very moved by her singing. And Julie, while she was working, glanced at me, saw what I was doing and called Robert Wise's attention to it in hopes that he would be able to photograph my reaction to her, which is a very generous thing for an actress to do. I did feel a bit out of it in an ordinary suit amongst all those togas and fancy dresses, but uh, 
Having Julie sing to me personally sort of made up for it. She was absolutely charming. I, I offered her my cigar, but she turned me down. But she was absolutely charming and, uh, in addition to beauty, had a great sense of humor. I remember Julie's professionalism. I mean, she was just wonderfully on the marks all the time. And there was, you know, sometimes she films when people are very, very prestigious. You, you have to kind of make way for them. The red carpet comes out. But with Julie, that was never so. She was, she was just a worker, wonderful. She brings such vitality, she brings such energy, she brings such life to the character. And when you've got somebody to work with um, that, that gives you as much as Julie does, both on and off camera, uh, it's a pleasure. I mean, you just get up in the morning and you're, you're, it's, a, it's an exciting experience. You, you can't wait to get to the set because you know you're going to have a good day. It really was a very happy set. Uh, it, was a, it was a marvelous uh, experience. Uh, to be working on it. It was my pleasure to be a part of it, and I'm sure that it'll have the recognition that it has always so richly deserved. I made 39 films over the years, and uh, if I have one major regret connected with any of the films, it's the fact that Star didn't really take off and wasn't recognized and wasn't appreciated for what it is when it first came out. This is the one musical that I did that somehow disappeared. But now, apparently, it's finally achieving the popularity it should, I think, and it's finding a niche for itself, which is, I could have told everybody it was this good years ago. I'm thrilled that uh, it is now back where it belongs because there are such wonderful musical numbers in the piece. Um, and things that would have really been lost, and I'm just so proud to have been a part of it and thrilled that it's back, at least uh, in amongst the other great musicals. And I'm so, so relieved that it's going to be out there and not, not forgotten, because it's, it's one of the, I think, one of the fine musicals uh, that's ever come out of Hollywood. Julie Andrews, Gertrude Lawrence. Julie. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome. This evening we've done a lot of taped interviews and the question that has come up all the time is, well, what did this film mean to you and, and, and what do you take away from it? And it didn't take me long to answer because unhesitatingly the thing that I took away from it was deep, good friendships. Uh, uh, the friendships that I made on this film uh, Michael and Sheena and Saul and, and, and Bob Wise, although I had met them before, it, this film cemented it and we've remained friends for years. It just sort of stands as a great block in my memory that it was a very special time in my life. I learned an enormous amount. It's a treat for me to see it, so thanks for being here and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 